thanks everybody for joining us tonight. And uh, of course, consistency is very, very, very important with any kind of practice. And um, meditation is a practice. Meditation is one of, I, I personally feel that meditation is the, one of the few practices that we can do to help us in every aspects of life. Um, a lot of people look at it as a spiritual practice, which I think is fair. Um, but what is spirituality has a broad <laughs> definition to it. Um, when we, when a lot of people that I know think of meditation, they think of Buddhism. Uh, I had a guy today. Uh, uh, it was on like on Facebook Messenger. He got a hold of me and said, um, he asked me, he said, how do I know you? Are you Advaita or or Hindu? Or are you uh, from Gurdjieff, Gurdjieff way? He went down all the lists of all these different um, possibilities of the spiritual stuff. And I'm reading it going, wow, you know, I, I know of all these traditions and it's kind of interesting. I've never been one that really put a label on my, uh, my beliefs or anything like that. But if I was to hang a label on something, it would be that I'm a meditator. And I would hope um, a lot of people would not be shy to call themselves a meditator because I think the more they do, the more they kind of get the word out. And that's all it takes is to let people know that you meditate and then um, and then they ask questions and you can go from there. You know, as far so as far as you know, there's no need to promote meditation. It just happens on its own because it's one of those things that is um, uh, is a healthy practice. A lot of people recognize that these days. But from a spiritual standpoint, um, I like to use the example of, of the Buddha, you know, in, but the, the Buddha mentioned that if we did nothing else, we should just meditate. I mean, like, um, we don't have to, you know, go to all these talks and read all these books and, and believe everything that we hear and study and you know, turn pages and all that stuff. But he said, if we, if we would sit down and meditate every day, all the answers would come to us, you know, everything would come on its own. And so from that standpoint, the, we, we are spiritual beings, you know, we are spiritual people. Um, and I think that spirituality to, to keep it very simply defined is, the aspect of going in and seeing what's going on inside of us. And meditation does just that. You know, we close our eyes and we, the outer world, uh, maybe we could call it the noisy world, you know, kind of goes away. And uh, we, we go within to a certain extent of, of, of feeling and understanding what to do with our emotions. And um, the, you know, some of the, the spiritual teachings like um, impermanence, you know, how, how, how important impermanence is from the aspect of, you know, how much time do we have left? Are we spending our time wisely, the time that we do have left? Um, are, we, are we spending each moment the way we really want to spend it? Are we spending it with the people that we want to spend it with? And, you know, are we spending it wisely? You know, when it comes down to our most important economy, uh, eco e um, economy, no, that's the wrong word too. <laughs> our, our most precious gift is our time. It's not our wealth. As far as money goes, our wealth comes from, you know, the time we have. And so, you know, just the teaching of, of everything being impermanent and um, everything, um, uh, everything, you know, be, being in that flow with everything is, is something that comes up in our meditation, it's something that we recognize and see and we, we get a chance to work with uh, in that meditation. And then usually people will ask, you know, how long should we be meditating each day? Um, 
that's the key each day. <laughs> that's it. That's all. Just meditate each day and uh, you don't have to worry about really the aspects of time. I know people that, that meditate a couple of hours a day and I know people that meditate, you know, like 20 minutes a day. And, and I, I look at each these these meditators equally because the, the consistency is the most important part. And it does quiet the mind. Um, foremost, I, I guess we would say that if we can sit by ourselves for a few moments each day and see our thoughts go by without grasping onto any of them, without attaching to any of them, we, um, we are doing really well as a meditator. And because that's our learning experience, all these things go by and they're always going by, whether we're meditators or not, they will, thoughts and feelings and emotions will always go be going by, but it's what we do with that information. Do we try to grab it and break it down and, and, and study it and wonder why it's there? You know, maybe in some cases, but no, not all the time. We'll burn out. We will get burnt out by doing that constantly because we can't possibly do that to everything that comes into our world. Uh, or can we learn to um, see, recognize these things and just see them for what they are and not try to grasp onto them and not try to, to change anything for what it is? Yeah, we can certainly do that. And when we start to do that, then we, from my belief and my feeling anyway, that's when we really start to enjoy life. When we realize that we don't have to change everything that comes into our way and that is, it comes into the picture of our life. It's it, it just accepting it for what it is, accepting it for, you know, just being a part of our life and that it doesn't have to change. It's supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be there. And of course, there are there are things that we um, uh, may decide to change that we would like to see different in our world, in our life, and that's fine too. But we can't grasp onto the idea that it has to be that particular way that we want to change it, and it's going to change that way for good, and and that type of thing because that's another form of grasping. Maybe tonight. Well, no, no, maybe is about it. Let's we'll do a meditation based on on these aspects of um, the uh, the idea of of how meditation, you know, plays this role in our life as being the teacher. You know, we have to sometimes stop at, at looking at us teaching ourselves from the aspect of trying to figure these things out and. And really let, let the practice, let meditation be the teacher, you know, and just allow it to do its work. And um, so I recommend that everybody get comfortable. And that, that could mean, you know, be sitting in a chair. It could mean sitting in, in your favorite cushion. And I invite you to close the eyes. For some of you, this is the first meditation that you've done all day. For others, this might be the, the second chance you've had to meditate. And I like to think in terms of maybe the first time that we meditated today, or maybe the maybe the second time that we met had a chance to do so, as opposed to this being the only meditation that we've done all week. Because once we start thinking in terms of our meditation evening, for example, or my med this is my meditation group, this is when I meditate, these are habitual thoughts. 
these are thinking patterns of the mind that say that it's okay to meditate once a week with the group. And of course, I'm the last one to, that would say that you shouldn't be here and you shouldn't meditate you know, with a group at least once a week. But I certainly do encourage people to not only use this as their only opportunity to meditate and to get a, a personal practice going, a home practice, if you don't already. There's a handful of students and they know who they are. They are the students that started with me some time back and just made up their own mind that they were going to have a daily practice. They maybe started using Insight Timer, an app called Insight Timer, and use that to calculate their progress of meditation, so to remind them to meditate, to kind of show a, a chart of their progress in a way, and to allow them to remember that they're, they're not alone meditating. There's lots of people doing it with them all the time. People all over the world meditating right now. They're never alone meditating. It's part of the wonderful energy of the practice. And so these people that have picked up this daily habit are the people that I personally know that have made the most incredible life changes. And I know years ago when I began meditating daily, I could say that about myself that I had made huge progress in this journey called life. I really started to, to be able to figure things out and I didn't even realize I was doing it at the time. It was just because of the practice, it really was. I was able to close my eyes every day and go within understanding myself at a brand new level and consequently standing, understanding other people at that level as well. And so meditation is that opportunity for each of us to learn more about ourselves. close our eyes, we bring our attention to the breath. Feel the breath as it comes into the body, as it leaves the body. We understand that we have the freedom to count the breaths if we like to. And when we meditate every day, we realize that some meditations are very, very worthwhile and they go very smooth. And at other times it's not so easy, but it's not as noticeable as if, if we don't do it consistently. It's like any other habit that's not really formed, we have to push ourselves into doing it. It's like working out three days a week. It's difficult, but if we worked out a little bit each day and had a pattern going same time each day and knew exactly what we're going to do and where we're going to do it and how we're going to do it, it would become such a part of our life that it would not be a problem. It would just be a part of us. And that's how meditation can be as well. 
consistency. And there's a great deal of trust that we have to have in the practice because it's really quite simple. Relaxing the body, stilling the mind, just allowing the practice to do its thing, which is to be the teacher for us. Meditation is the teacher, teacher itself. So if your attention is on the breath, just realize that there's many, many ways you can use this. Focus on top of the inhalation, on the bottom of the exhalation. You can notice that one breath is long and one breath is short. One breath is full of energy, whereas another breath might feel more like it has everything to do with relaxation. You might notice the movement of the abdomen when we breathe. We might give the breath a color. Maybe breathing in blue and exhaling pink or something like this. But when we're using the breath in any one of these many different ways, what we're doing is coming into this presence that is our true nature. And presence is something that the more we get used to using, resting in, The more familiar we get with it, the more we familiar we get with ourselves. And that's where our strength comes from. That's where our limitless capacity to be much more than we think we are comes from. When we can rest in the present moment, we understand that fear and anger are just a part of the mind. They seem very real in the moment, but they're just created by the mind. So we sit and we focus using the breath, focusing on the breath. And the mind will start to wander as it always does. 
And some of us have some really good tricks to stop the mind from wandering, to, to get it to really stay put. It's just from meditating day after day after day after day. Sometimes it works, these tricks work really well and a lot of them we've already mentioned. And sometimes they don't work very well for whatever reason, but we can't be frustrated by that either. The mind can sometimes become distracted, whether we're meditating or not. And if we focus on this and realize that this is going to happen, this is a part of the schooling. This is a part of our lesson. And the more we notice this, the more we rec recognize that we have this capacity to come back to this presence and just rest there and get to learn more about ourselves moment by moment. So let's rest in silence for 10, 15 minutes and I'll come back in and check up on us in a, in a couple of moments here. But focus on the breath and notice when you're not present. Notice when you are present. And see if you can recognize that as, as being you, your true identity, that that presence is you, no other names or labels needed. You are that presence.
stay with the breath. Attention is not there, bring your attention back to the breath. And ask yourself if, if your intention was to focus and remain on the breath the last 15 minutes of this practice, how much of that time was actually used focusing on the breath? Or how much of that time was just spent allowing the mind to wander. Neither one of these things is right or wrong. It's, we owe it to ourselves to be able to look at these things. We've set aside a special time to practice meditation to learn something about ourselves. And so we have to watch the habit of the mind, how it has a tendency to take the easy way out most of the time. Many of us are simply fatigued from the things that we've done throughout the day. So when we get a chance to relax the body and calm the mind, we go into daydream, almost like a lucid dream. And there's those of us that are very well trained in meditation, that our intention is to focus our attention on the breath some aspect of the breath. And we apply all of our attention toward that. And we understand this, this presence. And as a result, we become happier and we are happier people because we understand more about ourselves. And there's lots of meditators and practitioners that are somewhere in between. And it's, none of it is right or wrong. It's just something that we should realize about ourselves. A few more minutes here, focusing on the breath. Set your intention again, if need be, to put all of your attention on the aspect of breathing. Noticing the breath or using the breath or counting the breaths, whatever it might be. There's no one way to do it. Just use the breath as a tool to become very present. Take a nice deep inhalation of the breath with the intention of bringing yourself back into your room, back into this place. Keeping the eyes closed if you like. Just take a nice couple of deep inhalations. May each one of us and all beings be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to us. 
May no difficulty come to us. May we all meet with spiritual and worldly success. May we have the patience, the courage, and the understanding to meet and overcome any problems or any difficulties that we might face in life. We got a few minutes left here and I just wanna see if there's any questions or any kind of um, comments that anybody has, any kind of, you know, anything at all as far as, um, you know, all these meditation is very, very simple and we all realize that I think, but th there's a aspect of it that, um, um, we kind of forget. And um, th that is the, the aspect of us being um, more than our minds give us credit for. And that is, that's what I'm talking about, this presence and, and being, being this presence. And if, if we're not understanding what that presence is, it is, it is the, um, it's the mind when it's in neutral, we could say. And um, we're not thinking about moving forward. We're not, we're not moving backwards. Everything is um, as it should be, as it, as it uh, you know, we're not looking to change, have things change or anything like that. And we are actually willingly placing ourselves in neutral, if you will. And that is while some people define the present moment. Um, as that place of neutrality, um, but it's also it's also a place where the the mind is seemingly shut off for a while, and we're giving ourselves permission for there for that to be that way. But we can we can be in a place of presence while we're meditating, or while we're out working, or, or doing anything. So um, it's uh, it's a place that we're all familiar with. We've all been there. We always will be there, um, but yet we sometimes struggle to be there. We try to remind ourselves that, you know, if I could just get there a little bit more, more often, maybe I'd be more happy. But it's uh, the fact is, is that it's always there. It's always possible.